the only way I can remember how to pronounce Zo is by singing it in my head like the Pink song. Zo what? I'm still a rock star. <laughs> So better be the right way to pronounce it. The amount of times I've been trolled by the One Piece community in my lifetime is astronomical. Luffy's current bounty right now is how many times I've been lied to in the comments. Hi, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. I am reading One Piece for the very first time. Playlist is down in the description box if you want to check out all of my One Piece arc videos, reading them for the first time, reacting to the chapters, going chapter by chapter. So that's what I'll be doing again in this video for Zoe. The Zoe arc is relatively short compared to what I've just done with Dress Rosa and it is only 23 chapters long. It covers chapters 802 through to 824 and is volumes 80 through 82. And it feels so weird just holding this tiny amount of volumes in my hand. But we are in the 80s of the volumes and we are in the 800s of the chapters. I am catching up so rapidly and I can't wait. Before I get into it, I do want to quickly mention I have a One Piece channel membership. You can get early access to these videos. You get exclusive members only live shows. I'm thinking of doing a One Piece movies watch along too soon. Soon. That was highly requested recently and a hundred million more things in the future too. Gonna start reading now so don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, now let's go to Zoe. <laughs> wow. Okay, I finished the first chapter of Zoe. Chapter 802. Wow. It's on the back of an elephant? That's incredible. That's so cool. I was told that Zoe meant elephant, but I just thought that maybe it would be an island full of elephants or something. And I was telling my channel members, if anything bad happens to an elephant, I am out. I am out. I love elephants so, so much. But yeah, we have a whole island on the back of an elephant that's been around for an entire millennium. Wow. So yeah, that's just like so different and so unexpected. Even people were saying as well, Gam, what do you expect from Zoe? And I was like, I don't really expect much. I mean, all I know is that it's elephant, island of elephant, but no, it's, it's a literal elephant. It gives me a little bit of like Terry Pratchett vibes. Now I've never read Terry Pratchett, but I do think the entire world is on the back of a turtle or something. I will read Terry Pratchett eventually, but that's the kind of vibe that I'm getting from an island being on the back of a moving elephant. Okay, so let's go back to the start of the chapter. Make sure you play along at home, kids. I almost forgot like how dangerous the new world is. I remember when we first got into the new world after Fishman Island and seeing the destruction that was happening in the water, how it was all red and it just looked so dangerous. And yeah, there were huge hailstones falling down from the sky. And my heart was so full seeing Boto again at the start of this arc. I mean, I do hope that we see him throughout this entire arc, honestly, like I would love to see that. Especially since at the minute, he is providing so much comic relief that is a great way of starting this arc, if you ask me, because I can imagine it probably will get a lot more serious as we go on. But to have Bartle be so childlike at the start is just great, so great to read, and I always love it when he's here. Honestly, so different to how I talked about him in my Dress Rosa Part 1 video. So there was a crewmate called Gambia who constantly calls their grandma about advice and stuff because they don't have a navigator, which I honestly found so funny, especially since Usopp is like, okay, we need some genuine advice on how to navigate this since you don't have a navigator, Nami's not here, like, what does she have? And they're talking about, right, there's gum stuck on the deck that they've never been able to get off, wrap the healing cloth and freeze it with gum, and then they're like, wow, it just came off, it's just like, it's like the most silliest of things. During this really intense scene of this hail coming down and hitting the ship, hitting the going Luffy, I believe it's called. It says Luffy going this, but it, I, I'm sure it's going Luffy. She says, rub the lump of sugar. Enough with the folk wisdom. I need to do a two hour video on every single funny thing that happened in One Piece. During all of this commotion, we do go to the Navy headquarters with a report that the AO pirates, formerly Wiccan under Whitebeard, have been wiped out. And it seems like they're the 16th group of people who were under the Whitebeard pirates or group of pirates that have been destroyed. How many former YPA captains have gone down now? That was the 16. So it seems like in the post Marineford world, post Whitebeard's death, there is a dismantling of the Whitebeard pirates and what they represented and what they stood for and how they are in this world. And it was the warlord Edward Weevil. And I'm not sure I've heard of Weevil before, but we do meet him literally straight away. And I don't know if I believe what they're saying. So this is Edward Weevil. I mean, yes, he does kind of look like Whitebeard in a way, but I mean, that could just be a costume like that. 
beard thing on his face that looks like white beards, that could be fake. It could be the mama, Miss Buchan, who has gaslit her son and made him believe that he is Whitebeard's son. And you know, I will be more shocked if he does turn out to be Whitebeard's son. Especially since Miss Buchan says, that makes me the woman Whitebeard loved. And I don't know why, but it just seems like she is trying to be very manipulative with that. Maybe she thinks so highly of herself that she would say that Whitebeard would love her. And like, I do say the parallels to my own love for Ace, of course. <laughs> Maybe we're both a little bit deluded. <laughs> so I can say the signs. I can definitely say the signs. But, you know, I would be very surprised if they do turn out to be the woman that Whitebeard loved and Edward Newgate's actual biological son. That would surprise me immensely. But he does seem to be very strong. If he's the one who took down 16 Whitebeard pirates, because I do believe that is what Kazaru said, was it him again? Yes, the whole Lord Weevil. So, like, he's on a rampage right now. And I believe he is trying to, well, especially since actually this definitely proves, I think to me, that they are just trying to take advantage of the situation of Whitebeard being dead because they're trying to get the inheritance. I mean, poor Edward Weevil wants to avenge his dad. He wants to get Blackbeard and kill him. But Miss Buchan is saying, oh, well, we can't do that because vengeance doesn't give you money. It doesn't get you money at all, does it? It won't earn you a single berry. We've got to have money. You need to inherit his fortune. So that's when I was like, hmm, hmm, something fishy there. Some stinks and it ain't the fish. So they do talk about Doflamingo going down and it was Gob's grandson that did it. So I wonder if maybe they're heading towards so or if they are not going to cross paths for a while. It would be interesting to round out their story in this arc though because I feel like what they're doing needs some attention because surely anybody could claim to be Whitebeard's son or his lover and try to get the inheritance. I mean, if he has any inheritance to give because I, I don't know how that works in this world. So a week has passed, we are on the Going Mr. Luffy. It's either Going Luffy or the Going Mr. Luffy. And Bartow and his crew are all seasick. Something that, again, is just so ridiculous. I actually love the fact that Law calls Usopp God. Like, he just calls him that as if it was actually his name. And I don't think that's a translation thing because even Usopp's like, God, oh geez, it's so hard getting used to being a 200 million man. So even Usopp is trying to get used to that title. I'm trying to get used to it too. So will this change other people's opinion on Usopp? Will this change how people say him going forward? The new people he meets, is this going to change his behaviour whenever he gets into a situation? Is he going to be braver? Is all it takes sometimes for bravery is to have those people believe in you and believe a certain image of you and you're trying to show them that, which is something that Usopp kind of did do in Dress Rosa in front of the Tontata when he was telling them all this stuff about him being a hero. And then when Robin disappeared and turned into a toy and he forgot about her, he did run away. But then he was like, you know what? I want to be the hero that I've been telling you all along and I want to prove myself right. And then he ends up saving the day. So I wonder if this is something that will be a, a recurring thing with Usopp in the future. I mean, I would absolutely love it. But the Viva card is pointing to this mountain, they think it is, but it's moving, a moving mountain, which turns out to be that elephant. Oh my God, it's just so cool. Oh, also, can I talk about Robin's humor for a second too? She was laughing at the point when everyone was trying to uh, get away from the hailstones and you know, it's there's chaos on board, they have no navigator. And Robin is just in the back being like, hee hee, it's so lively. I just love the fact that she's so childlike in her humor. And it, the same can be said, I think it was in Punk Hazard when they were all tied up. And Robin's just like sitting there laughing at Luffy. You know, I feel like she's making up for lost time from when she was a child. And it balances rather well, I, I think, with her dark humor. Because a little bit later on, when Usopp is himself feeling seasick, Robin goes, you look pale Usopp, need some gum. And it's just like, no, <laughs> that gum's been all over the deck remember that. And that's already been in someone else's mouth. So it's just the delivery, like the dry delivery of Robin there. And how, I, I honestly, I feel like her and Law just have the most perfect sense of humour to me. And then that's when they see the elephant. I love that panel so much. The place that flourished on the back of an elephant and it's alive. <laughs> Law asks, can you give us some of your food supplies? Bartle shouts, why should I help you? And then he goes, fine, will you give Straw Hat some of your food? Go ahead and take everything we've got. <laughs> <laughs> we end the chapter with this panel of the elephant. With its eyes being so hollow, I'm wondering what the implications of that are because not gonna lie, it's kind of a little bit scary 
to see it. I mean, it's incredible and it's a wonder to see an elephant that large carry an island on its back. But also, like, what is it saying about this elephant's well-being? Like, is this elephant, like, actually alive and feeling? Or is it just part of the island that is just, like, it has no choice but to continue moving forward and continue moving without stopping? So is this something that we're going to explore in Zoo? Explore in Zoo. Mm. It's beautiful. Okay, chapter 803, there are some things to talk about. Okay, but firstly, I forgot to show you my One Piece shirt. I did get this a couple of months back, but I haven't found a good time to wear it. The cover story of chapter 804, we had Ace the Pitcher and Sapo the Catcher playing baseball with a Lappin. Love that. And especially true since Ace was always the pitcher in our relationship. Anyway, what a cliffhanger we had in this chapter. I'm so sad that we had to say goodbye to Bottle and his crew in this chapter. I hope they do come back at some point. But they did serve their purpose and they served it well. I feel like we wouldn't have gotten this far without them, let's be honest. They deserve all of the praise. When they say, hallelujah, Mr. Thousand Sunny, we're not worthy, we're not worthy, it just reminded me of, oh my god, what is that from... I know it has Mike Myers. Is it Wayne's World? Something where they're like, we're not worthy, we're not worthy. Reminded me of that. That was really funny. And I want to start using a bliss barometer from now on too, since that's what they apparently have when they're confronted with the straw hats. And yeah, their bliss barometers are already peeking out. That's me. <laughs> I love how Bardo as well gave this huge speech, you know, to leave with. And then they totally ignored us. And they're just looking at this thing on the deck of the Thousand Sunny thinking, oh, is it a snake? Is it a lizard? Turns out to be a cute little dragon. And I love that Robin has this like really serious face when she's like, it's so cute. That happens twice. It happens again a little bit later on where she's just thinking in her head, it's so cute. Yeah, it kind of is. It kind of is quite cute. We go back to Dragon 2. We see the Revolutionary Army headquarters. And I thought that was really interesting and love the fact that Koala came back and you know, was telling him about the mission. But what scares me about this actually is when he says, call an assembly of all the revolutionary leaders throughout the world, and they're gonna bring them to this place. But then we find out when we check in on the Blackbeard pirates, for instance, turns out that Jesus Burgess had been hiding in one of the revolutionary army ships. And he now knows where the headquarters of this revolutionary army are. So does this mean that we're gonna have this all out war between the revolutionaries and the Blackbeard pirates? Which if we do, that's, Genuinely terrifying. And I remember this guy from Impel Down too. He was a scary fellow. He was a scary fellow. I was wondering when he would come back. So the implications of that are huge. And I'm wondering if in this arc, we're not just gonna be set in Zor and we're not just gonna be following the Straw Hat Pirates doing whatever it is they're doing there because I am so close of the overall plot in Zor. So maybe we're just gonna get like loads of random little flashes throughout this, this arc to different people. Cause we also say Buggy, Buggy the Genius Jester, he is apparently called now, Warlord of the Sea. And it's really nice, even though he doesn't really say much. In fact, I don't even think he speaks at all. But Mr. Three's there, that's so cool. I do like him. But yeah, now that Doflamingo is down and isn't supplying the weapons anymore, there is like this huge gap in the market. And now Buggy is like, let's pillage. And now everything that you guys do is legal under the business of a Warlord of the Sea. So it's like... This whole system is broken, really, isn't it? We do find out through Kinemon that they have another lost companion at sea who arrived at Zo. I, why did I struggle to say that there? My brain is fighting me. It's trying to say Zao, but I know it's Zo. But there is a ninja called Raizo who made it to Zo. But a ninja, okay, okay, I like that. I like that a lot. I haven't read very many ninja type things. I did read the first volume of Naruto. And that was really, really good. I do need to go back into reading that. But it is so cool that we have a ninja. We had a dragon in this chapter. We have a huge elephant. Again, just like the imagination of it all. I've talked way too long when all I want to know is what the hell happened next. Something's fallen from above. Huh? Huh? What the heck is that? So I'm just like, shut up, Gavin, and get back to reading. The start of chapter 804 and said that cliffhanger straight away. It was a falling monkey. And it was a cute monkey at that, though. Look at it. It's so cute. So Kinemon and Kanjiro they end up falling from the dragon that's taking them up. So they're split up now, they're separated. And I was wondering like, how long will it take before this group gets split up? And apparently before they've even entered Zo. <laughs> but I'm not complaining, I'm getting used to it. The core group are still pretty much together. And oh, the dragon though, the dragon taking them up. Well, first they're like, you need to start climbing down so that we can get the samurai. 
and the dragon is just like, can't do it, can't do it. So they're going up ahead and they're shouting the dragon's name, Rhinosuke, Rhinosuke. And this dragon is just like trying so hard, so, so hard. And he, even Robin is like, you can do it. Like, it's intense. It's intense. Like, will this dragon make it or not? Robin is like, you'll turn back into a drawing now. And oh, that's just like so sad. I want Rhinosuke to forever be with us. Forever. Just, oh. Like, I'm starting to get now why Robin just kept interrupting us with her thoughts of it's so cute, it's so cute. I can totally say that now. So they have arrived and I love the fact that the ground is actually the elephant skin because what I originally thought was just that this island was placed on top of the elephant, essentially, not the fact that this island was growing out of the elephant, which, you know, saying out loud, it does make sense that it will be growing out of the elephant and not just placed on top of it. But Zor looks pretty good though. It almost looks a little bit, maybe Indiana Jones-esque, you know, in the middle of a jungle coming across this abandoned temple or something. Like, it looks like big temples and all of the forestry too with these almost like balloon-shaped trees. It never ceases to amaze me, the drawings of these new places. Like, that must have taken so long for Order to originally come up with and illustrate. But it does look like something's happened here. There has been some destruction, a trail of destruction. The hinges of the gates have been taken off and it seems like they've walked straight into something. So one thing that's pretty scary is that when the people of Zor, and it seems like they are the Mink tribe, which I think I recall from Savoy Archipelago, I think they might have been on the slave list. So these are an oppressed race. So already I'm feeling a lot of compassion towards them. It's a bit like when we go to Fishman Island and we know exactly what happened to the fishermen and how they're perceived. It also seems like the Mink tribe are in the same sort of vein as that. But one thing that does stand out to me that kind of scares me a little bit is the fact that one of them is wearing Nami's clothes. So what have they done to Nami, Chopper, Brook, Sanji, and the gas guy as Luffy keeps referring to him as? But yeah, those clothes are on armies. So what have they done? Where are they? I'm a little bit worried for their well-being now. But I love their designs. They seem to be like animal humans in a way. Like, uh, honestly, I'm so bad. I'm so bad. Like, I know that she's a rabbit. There's one who seems to be some kind of rabbit. But is she like a, a dog? Maybe like, is that a, a dog face? Maybe, I don't know, but then like the body of a human, which does remind me a little bit of Punk Hazard, when we had those people who had been merged with lizards and stuff. It reminds me of that. I know it's not the same thing, but it reminds me of that. I believe they are good people, just misunderstood, but like, obviously they're gonna probably stand in the way right now. They will probably be antagonists for now. I don't think they're bad people. What have they done to Nami though? Like why is Nami naked now? Is this gonna be the thing? They better have given her some other clothes. Like, if she's in prison clothes, fair enough, you know? <laughs> if they trespassed on their country, <laughs> lock them up. <laughs> Come on, you don't just take somebody else's clothes, even if they have broken the law. So she better be in a jumpsuit or I'm right and she better not be naked. After finishing chapter 805, I am so surprised that Zoro would be the one to defend Sanji. When it's implied by Wanda, who is a sort of like dog-like creature, I was right. I don't know why I doubted myself. I thought she did look like she had the features of a dog, but I just wasn't 100% sure. I just thought I would be automatically wrong. And there's also Carrot as well. Carrot is the rabbit looking one. But when they indicate that Nami, Sanji, Chopper, Baruch are dead, Zoro is the one who says, calm down, twirly brows with them and he wouldn't screw up and let them get killed. And I'm like, Zoro, look at you coming out to defend Sanji here. And I feel like it's obvious that they aren't dead, not just because obviously I've seen that they're in future arcs, but just the fact that, yeah, like they wouldn't be taken down so easily. It's a trap to rattle and manipulate us. But I don't think, you know, after reading this chapter that it is a tactic to try and rattle and manipulate them because they seem to be rather genuine. So I did think that, oh, they were probably arrested them and jailed them, jailed them? lock them up <laughs> because of trespassing or something. But no, it seems like something has happened here. Like something really catastrophic has happened here from before Sanji and everyone came here. And they believe that they are actually dead because at the very end of the chapter two, there's one at the end says, climb onto Warney, I will take you to right flank to your friends. Great, so that's where Sanji is. And like, I don't know, like she has an expression that's a little bit like, I, um, it's, Okay, I, I don't think they're bad people, of course, still, but there's something off, there's something wrong a little bit right now. Like, why would they believe that they're dead? Like, are they playing dead? No, they wouldn't play dead. 
What? <laughs> but Luffy had broken up from the rest of them when they first got there, of course, because he was like so excited to explore. But he ran into Beeple, who is Trafalgar Law's polar bear, who we met in Savary Archipelago. And Trafalgar Law is so happy that his crew is here and Luffy has been like fighting some of the minks too. And I'm so glad that Trafalgar Law is still with us, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that. But I am so glad he is still here. He is still getting some airtime. But we do meet more of the minks. They do seem pretty cool. And they don't seem to be like they're gonna be the antagonist of this arc. It seems like maybe it might be someone called Jack because I say in just a week or two ago, the country came to a swift dramatic collapse. The Macomo dukedom has existed for centuries. The name of the one who ruined our land is Jack. Jack. I mean, I know plenty of Jacks and 90% of them have also ruined my life. I feel like I have heard the name Jack in this before, but I'm not 100% sure. I mean, to be fair, Jack can be a common name. It does ring some kind of bell. But yeah, it seems like this entire place is empty. It's deserted. It's, it's in collapse, which is so sad. Even Robin, when she sees this pot in the kitchen, she says, there are still signs of recent activity. It must have happened not too long ago. So where is everyone? What actually happened to them? Jack must be someone so big and powerful to have caused something like this. And I'm sure he didn't do it alone, so he must have had some kind of crew with him, like Jack's crew. There we have it, a few chapters in. I feel like maybe Jack is our antagonist of the arc. So will he live up to Doflamingo? If he is. Right, of course, of course, right. Okay, chapter 806 done. So I have heard Captain Jack. Of course I have. It was like the last chapter of Dress Rosa, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Uh, it did ring a bell, and then as soon as they mentioned that Jack had tried to stop a Navy ship with Doflamingo on it, like it made the news and stuff. That I remembered, yeah, there was somebody who was going to try and stop and I was worried in the previous arc that Doflamingo would escape pretty much after just being caught, after being taken down. But yeah, there he is. There he is from the end of the previous arc. Looks like we can't see his Joker. Shall we return Captain Jack? Why would we? Of course I don't know you idiot. Who the hell do you think I am? So yeah, of course, like, I, I knew it. I knew it. It was in the back of my mind. And also, it's Beppo. I said his name was Beppo in the previous one, but I do have to give a huge thank you again to Deathly Muffins for sending me a pronunciation guide for Zo and Whole Cake Island. Thank you so much. So I said Beppo, it's Beppo. I can't believe I said Beppo. I'm sorry. But I'm correcting my mistakes right now. Yeah, oh, what a great chapter, actually. And did anyone else get some kind of like water seven parallels? Maybe a little bit. Because when the elephant bathes itself, it kind of floods the town, but it's built in a way that there are aqueducts and things like that so that they can use it as a sort of water system. They can get fish and even sharks from this. But it kind of reminded me a little bit of like Aqua Laguna in a way, and the fact that Water 7 is sort of like slowly sinking, isn't it? Right, there's a woman who lives right opposite me and she keeps staring at me through her upstairs window. She needs to stop looking. She makes me so self-conscious, which is weird because all of you are looking at me right now. I don't feel self-conscious about that, but she is literally staring at me. Just ignore her. The rain eruption was pretty fantastic. But also the fact that the two samurai are trying to climb back up the leg of this elephant. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm distracted. Uh, up the leg of this elephant, but they're using another drawing, this time of a cat, a big cat. And whenever water hits it, obviously washes the drawing out. So their journey up the leg of the elephant is going to be so hilariously long that I'm expecting them not to get to the top until the end of the arc. I seriously am. But what the hell? Okay, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but I'm actually really scared for Sanji because I just don't understand what's happened. I don't understand what's happened. I'm jumping all over the place here, but my mind is all frazzled because I'm, I am worried. Wanda has a flashback to Jack and it seems like somebody was tied up onto that big X thing that maybe Jack had tortured them, maybe killed them as well. Somebody who was probably close to Wanda because she's crying and even Karen is looking very sad. And Jack is saying he must be here, he is not and that is final. Hand him over or your land will fall into ruin. So who is it that he is asking to be handed over? Is it Sanji? I'm just connecting the dots now. So why was Sanji in the previous arc only alive in the bounty poster thing. He was only alive, not dead or alive, only alive. What is the importance here? So does this connect to Sanji's fate? Has Sanji been taken by this Jack person? Oh no, does that mean Sanji's not here? Does that mean I'm gonna have to go through an entire arc without Sanji? Oh, you know what, actually, I said a couple of arc videos back, like how much Sanji was pissing me off, but like I do genuinely care for him, I do like him, and I miss him. So this is actually 
making me stressed. I need Sanji back. I, I do. It's been too long without him. But also Brooke. What about Brooke? Where is he right now? Because it seems like Chopper and Nami are the only ones who are in this uh big temple thing what's it called again inside the fortress so we have nami and chopper they have such elegant clothes on actually like look at chopper he looks like a little pimp not gonna lie and nami's looking beautiful as always and inside the fortress is incredibly detailed and beautifully illustrated too we have it seems like a ship inside it a ruined ship inside and it's like part of the overall look of this place and there are these big pineapple tree house things. They look so cool. I don't think, no, they could be acorns actually, not pineapples. But yeah, it just looks so cool. It looks so, so cool. And everyone is welcoming the straw hats. And I'm, well, I was a little bit confused because I was like, hmm, it seemed like they were probably against them as soon as they had set foot on Zo. But no, they're welcoming them with open arms. They have like this big celebration and they are so happy to see them. And also it seems like this is probably the place where everybody who lives in Zo has run to. Like this is their sort of defense and nobody is maybe allowed outside the fortress for their own safety. Also, sorry, again, all over the place. What I love about Wanda and the Minx and what she says about them, especially since Zoro says only supposed to be a human hating species, they say any hatred is based on individuals. And that's something that I love and that's something that I feel like Oda has used as a theme a few times in One Piece and something that I think does need to be hammered home. A point that does need to be explored and shown a lot. And that's what Oda's been doing brilliantly. We full body minks are proud of our fur, but many admire the lesser minks and your beautiful lack of fur. And it's just like so accepting. And I feel like because we saw the minks that were on the slave list and they most likely have this history of oppression that they appreciate other species. They appreciate people and individuals and things like that. So really, really cool to see that being explored here too. It seems like the ramifications of what we learned in Fishman Island and what we had with that villain with Holly Jones is still being felt to this day. Oh yeah, Momo too, where is he? But it's Sanji. Nami is crying at the end and she's hugging Luffy and she's saying, it's Sanji, what happened to Sanji? Has he been taken by Jack? But also, Jack tried to take down the Navy ships. So I, I don't know, like I need to understand the timeline, I need to understand what's happened, but I am genuinely concerned for Sanji now. Finished volume 80. And now we are going on to volume 81. We do have Sanji on the cover there actually, which I try not to pay too much attention to, but it looks like Chopper and Nami are wearing different clothes. So flashbacks? Oh no, I feel like we're gonna get some flashbacks. Oh, oh, oh. oh so in chapter 807, it was revealed that it was Rizo who Jack was looking for. So not Sanji. And also they do say that Sanji wasn't kidnapped. I'm getting like such Water 7 vibes from this. I don't know if I'm reading too much into it, but like say, if you envision Water 7 and you replace Robin with Sanji, so I'm feeling at the minute, Sanji's must have gone off somewhere on his own accord. And we're probably gonna find out in the next arc, which might be a little bit like Ennius Lobby, maybe, where we find some backstory on Sanji and learn a whole lot more about him, just like we did with Robin in any lobby where she willingly leaves in water seven if you know what i mean like that's kind of the vibes i'm getting right now especially since the new world has definitely paralleled or at least the arcs that we've had since post time skip have definitely paralleled the arcs that came before so like say dress rosa definitely paralleled alabasta for instance so i'm getting some like water seven ish vibes i might be totally wrong but that's what i'm feeling right now so i'm kind of anticipating some big Sanji stuff coming up. And it does look like we might be getting some more flashbacks soon. We did get Nami trying to tell the story of how they got away from Big Mama's Pirates. And it does seem like they did such a quick and easy job of it, which is great considering they were reduced to only four, four straw hats fighting together. And they really did work together again. Like we had Nami doing her rain temple. We had Brook using some moves. We have Chopper getting into his monster form. We have Sanji kicking stuff away, you know, using his leg as he does so brilliantly well. So they really handled the situation very, very well. And they got to Zo 10 days before, but did they say it was like 17 days? Yeah, 17 days ago is when the raiding bell rang and Jack came in with his people saying, hand him over, I know that somewhere in this land is a warrior from Wano known as Rizo, 
he's supposed to be here. So they weren't looking for Sanji, they were looking for Raizo. Okay. And Raizo is the ninja who Kinemon and the other samurai are looking for. I will remember his name at some point. But also the fact that they're not allowed to mention the samurai's name or Wano in general indicates to me that because of this guy, because of Raizo, it's put some trauma into this land. Maybe because they wouldn't hand him over and it looked like somebody was getting tortured to reveal the name or like the location of this person even. Maybe the minks are holding that against the people from Wano, maybe. Anyway, Brooke is fine. Brooke is absolutely fine. I was wondering what happened to him, but also it does make sense that when Wanda said about a corpse, of course, I mean, I should have just initially thought, oh, she's talking about Brooke. I do love the fact that Wanda, who is a dog mink, is like, it was a shock to me that there could be such an alluring species in the world. And obviously dogs love bones. So I love that little attention to detail with the animals. Like even though they are humanoid, they still have a lot of these animal instincts. Chapter 808 and yeah, no one's actually explained what's happened to Caesar. It turned out to be one of Caesar's gas weapons that helped to destroy the kingdom, but I don't think we know what's happened to Caesar just yet. I mean, I still don't really understand what's happened to Sanji just yet either, just that he's not here and he's left them a letter. So what is going on? It's actually really so cool to say a mammoth, but just to say these incredible historic animals come to life, especially since mammoths, you know, are extinct in our world, but to say anything is possible in this one is always so cool to say. So there's a lot of like flashback in this. Great to know that the minks are natural born fighters. So even like babies have the power of self-defense. So that's like really, really cool actually. They don't even like listen, they, they just go in all guns a blazing. They don't even really sit and ask questions. They just say, we are looking for this person. And they're like, you, you know, we can talk to the Duke of the Land, you know, it's, if you're looking for someone and then it's just like, don't care, just boom. The search in every home and they're just like causing all of this death and destruction. They just want to listen, which is a scary thought for a four, especially since they are so close to Kaido too. Jack is one of the three closest associates, each of them named after a disaster, Jack the Drought. So I don't think we've met any of the other associates, I don't think. We have seen Kaido, but I don't think we've seen any of the other associates, but it could be wrong. But honestly, anyone associated with that big monster that we saw in the previous arc, I feel like we have like no chance against them. They seem to embody destruction. They just don't seem to have any rhyme or reason. It's just destruction. Anything they touch is destroyed as we've seen with this kingdom and they don't want to listen. They just want to kill and destroy. It's quite scary what they can do because it feels like there is like no place that is safe from them. King of the day, Duke Dogstorm is very grateful to the Straw Hat Pirates. And there's also a King of the Night, which I found really interesting. I've never heard of a place with two kings one of the day, one of the night. That is pretty, pretty cool. So <laughs> Brooke told Luffy not to mention anything about Wano or ninjas or samurais or anything like that. And then Luffy does do that. He asks about it. And <laughs> seeing Nami, Brooke and Usopp being like, Ugh, and beating him up. I've kind of missed, like, I don't know what this is about me. But I've kind of missed when they would beat Luffy up to a pulp and he would actually look like he's been beaten to a pulp. I mean, really sad, but quite funny. <laughs> I mean, this is the only kind of violence against friends that I approve of. Just finished chapter 809 and I find it so genius, the whole king of the day, king of the night kind of cycle, especially how like the dog falls asleep at exactly six o'clock. And then that's when the cat one, the cat viper comes to life essentially or becomes awake and then takes over ruling the place, you know, which, uh, dogs and cats are famously known to not really get along. I mean, there are lots of examples of cats and dogs getting along absolutely fine, but it's just like the kind of thing with them. And that seems to be the case here too. They seem to have some kind of feud with each other so that if they ever see each other again, they will most likely fight each other and they are equal in strength. I don't know what that says. I don't know if they will ever come face to face, but it also means that a lot of the um, dog, what was his name again, actually? The Duke Dogstorm, or just Duke, I'm, I'll just call him Duke. When he falls asleep at exactly six o'clock, everyone at the four percent falls asleep. So obviously in the flashback, some of them are fighting, but that means at a certain time, they're gonna have to fall asleep. And it's almost like a changing of the guard, you know, like in London, changing over the soldiers, the, what do you call them again? Gosh, I don't even know the name of it in my own country but the palace guards, essentially, when they change over, it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. But the car fiber is huge. Really like the design. Intruders will not escape this place alive. I'm also a little bit confused about like the whole mammoth and Jack thing. So does Jack control the mammoth? 
is Jack the Mammoth? I don't understand it. But the amount of berries on his head is one billion berries on Jack. That is huge. And I mentioned something in my previous video about how I didn't know how bounties really worked in the grand scheme of things because, I mean, I do. I do understand that it shows power and it's like a power scaling thing, I guess. And it tells the world exactly who is the most powerful and stuff like that. And I don't really care a whole great deal about power scaling, but it is incredible to say the whole one billion berries thing because that does prove and that does show that they are a immensely powerful foe. So I totally understand that. Like, thank you so much everyone who left comments on that and me being like, oh, why aren't there ever bounty hunters that go after them? Obviously not when they're this powerful, you know? <laughs> like who would ever dare to go after a one billion berry person? You know, so yeah, I guess it is just more of an information thing, more so than anything. That is fine. But one billion berries, that did take me by surprise. Also very interesting as well about the fact that the Duke had met Shanks before too. So that's cool. That might be important later on. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> okay, things are really starting to come together in chapter 810. I'm starting to get more of a sense of what went on here and how the Straw Hats play into it. Especially since the coincidental saving of this kingdom because of Straw Hat taking down Doflamingo. So we do have like the positive ramifications of taking him down compared to the negative side of it with a lot of, well, I say negative, but like negative to a lot of people because they've lost this income or this influx of weapons that Doflamingo was kind of procuring. So it's nice to say that the defeat came just in time to get Jack away from Zoe with a lot of the other pirates. It sounded like it was a really epic fight. Like even though they say like how much they love destruction, which is something that I kind of assumed from the fact that they wanted to fight without talking. The fact that they're fighting and stuff was going on for five days. It reminds me of the fight between Akiji and Sakazuki at Punk Hazard. And even Luffy said, this guy couldn't even beat him and that's just an underling of Kaido. Like when I say Kaido is the final boss, I mean it. I kind of knew just from looking at him that he would be the final boss and maybe the underlings or his close associates that we need to take down first before we can take him down. But then we also have Blackbeard to take down. We still need a Sakazuki as well, you know what I mean? Gosh, there's still so many villains that we need to take down. And even more villains seem to be popping up out of nowhere the more we get on. I imagine there's gonna be like 15 final bosses before we can take them down, get the one piece at the end probably, and then the end. It seems like Chopper helped to save the Calf Viper and Dogstorm. So I like the fact that Chopper manages to get a moment to shine considering he doesn't really get a whole lot a lot of the time. But no, it seems like the more arcs we're reading in the new world, the more that other straw hats are really shining. Like we had a lot of Usopp in the previous arc, Zoro as well with this fight with Pika for instance. Maybe Sanji will have his moment to shine. And yeah, I'm really enjoying this arc so far though. But I think my favorite moment from the arc, it's hilarious, is when Nami, Sanji, everyone gets to Zoro first and they need a way of getting up to the island at the top and they use Caesar. <laughs> they use Caesar to shut up and carry us. Mark my words, you will rue this day. Rue! <laughs> <laughs> He's just like used as a hot air balloon essentially, but it's the row. You will row this day. I love that. Right, I finished chapter 8 or 11. Things are happening. Firstly as well, I want to say that the SBS question corners, I love the fact that people are submitting their own birthdays for people in order is just accepting them as the official birthdays. I love that he's doing that. Like that's so interactive with the fans. And yeah, it seems like he's making these like their official birthdays now, which I know a few volumes back there was a... Was it a few volumes back? Could have been the last volume, but I'm sure there was some kind of calendar with everyone's birthday on. And I was good. I don't think anyone had my birthday. Where was it? Oh, now I want to find it. My birthday is May 7th. I'm sure Luffy's was only a couple of days before mine. And I'm just like, why couldn't Luffy have been born on my birthday? That would just would have been so cool. But now I want to find this birthday calendar stuff. Yeah, nobody has May 7th. And Naru is born on May 6th, apparently now. So that that's the day before I was born. Then Monkey Day Luffy on the 5th. Oh, it was Perona's birthday yesterday. But yeah, no one's born on May 7th. When's Ace's birthday? If you know whose birthday correlates with your birthday from One Piece, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know which One Piece character you share a birthday with. I apparently share a birthday with no one. Okay, so Ace's birthday is on January 1st. So New Year's Day, okay. We see how the Straw Hats really helped when they arrived there. They got Caesar to get the poison gas away from, or at least like evaporate it. Neutralized it, sorry, neutralized the gas. And also it's just like so sad to see how much they needed 
these like well the straw hats to come and like these strangers to them to come and you can see like the desperation and the pain like just stop like stop you ruining this place how much of our thousand year history must you destroy before you are satisfied and my heart just went out for the minx they were just put in such an awful situation and it just happened out of nowhere too one thing that's quite scary with the one piece world is that anybody can come up to your shores especially if they're connected to kaido and they can come and just destroy it like that you know and and you just don't have any kind of warning for it. It just happens. I love the fact that Chopper was forced in the season to help with all of the medicine and trying to heal everyone too. You know what? Like, there's a part of me that's like, is Caesar deep down a good guy? Or can we change him? There's a part of me that's like, I feel like we can probably change him. Is it weird that I kind of like him a little bit? I do like villains. And like, say, Doflamingo, I thought was a fantastic villain. And I did end up loving him, despite not agreeing with what he did. But I loved him as a villain. And you know what, Caesar's actually not bad. <laughs> I do quite like Caesar. I do. I can change him. I don't know exactly what the conflict is going to really be in Zoe at the minute right now, too. Because it seems like when Sanji and Nami and everyone came onto Zoe they managed to kick off the rest of the people who were left over from when Jack left. And now at the end of this chapter though, I have a feeling that Sanji left to go with the Big Mom Pirates. That's what it seems like it's gonna be because, is it Brooke? I think, yeah, Brooke says that something happened two days ago that they've kept a secret. I'm afraid that Sanji might never return to our side, which is again, making me think of Robin from Water 7 in Ennius Lobby. But it said he'd come back writing his letter the situation is more dire than it seems. When they were in Dress Rose there, the Big Mom Pirates overheard that they were going to Zoe, and so they followed them there. And now I do think they've managed to convince Sanchi to go with them to Whole Cake Island, which is the arc after this one. So what's the connection there? Big Mom Pirates is Big Mom his mum? Because I don't think we've ever heard much about Sanji in his past or anything. I don't think we know about his parents from what I recall, really. At least not from Baratier. Gosh, I really do need a reread. But like with the whole big mom, mum, Sanji, he's left voluntarily, it might seem. <laughs> That's probably a little too obvious, so I doubt that is actually what's happened there. But there's some kind of connection there. There must be some kind of family tied to Whole Cake Island in order for Sanji to leave willingly. So yeah, that's my two cents on the matter. Okay, like we took a serious turn in chapter 812. Like poor Peckham's actually going to let the Straw Hats escape because Peckham's is a mink and works for Big Mom and saw what the Straw Hats did for his people and was so grateful for that. But then Capone bloody shoots him and uh, yeah, what? It's like his devil fruit power. He's got like little people in his in his hands that shoot out and it looks like kills him or at least knocked him out. But he looks kind of dead to me. I never, I can never tell if Peckhams was gonna let him go. Capone Gang Beige had the castle castle fruit according to this. I'm a castle man. But so like he can transform himself into a castle. It's like step into my castle and then the next thing you know, there is a castle. I can't really tell too much. I think I would probably be able to tell more if it was animated. <laughs> Getting major Godfather vibes from him, which I feel like is probably an obvious kind of parallel there. He's most likely based off Al Capone, who is an American gangster. But you can definitely tell, and I love that though. I love the, the vibe of that. He is presenting Sanji with this invitation. It's just so Godfather-esque. You know, it's like so hard to explain exactly what I mean by that. But if you've seen Godfather, you know exactly what I mean. Just the whole cartel kind of thing going on there. I have an invitation for you here for Mama's Tea Party, you see. The main event this time is a wedding. The groom is Sanji, third son of the Vince Smoke family. The bride, Pudding, 35th daughter of the Charlotte family. 35 daughters, wow. And there's probably more after that, I don't know, but what Sanji is arranged to be married to the groom, Sanji, third son of the Vinsmoke family. So we must be getting more on Sanji's family soon then, which is what I kind of assumed. But what does that mean? Why is he being forced to marry Pudding? Is there some kind of alliance thing that needs to be done here? Because I do know in like real life, but also in a lot of literature, whenever there's like a forced marriage or an arranged marriage, it's usually an alliance between like royal families to strengthen their hold on their kingdoms. So maybe this is like some kind of Thing, but wait, no, because that, that would mean Sanji's royal if he's part of the Vin... Are the Vin Smoke family royals? I, has it ever been explained before? I don't think so. I don't buy that, but then I'm just, again, wondering, like, why would there be an arranged marriage between them? 
Unless it was to strengthen the kingdom. So has Sanji now gone willingly to Big Mom to get married? I mean, I know Sanji is a ladies' man, and I guess this is a fast track to being involved with a woman, but I don't think Sanji would want to leave the Straw Hats for that, though. I mean, I know it's probably against some of Sanji's character because he loves women so much. I still don't believe he would leave the Straw Hats for a woman. Come on, what else is he supposed to do? Maybe like this is a forced thing because it does look like Capone is very powerful. I mean, this is the only way Sanji is able to not have any more conflict, especially since the people of Zo have already been through so much. So you'll want to avoid as much conflict as possible. So, you know, maybe that's just something he has to do. But no, I need, I need to know more about this whole Vince Moe family situation. Why he's being forced to marry someone. Honestly, Paul Peckins. Oh, chapter 813, like what in the world is going on here? Right, okay, let's talk through it, let's talk through it. So Brooke knows of the Vince Moe family and it makes his backbone crawl. So I'm sure I knew that Sanji's name was Vince Moe, uh, Black Leg Sanji. I'm sure that was like his full name and I've known that for a while. Was I supposed to know that or not? I don't know who the Vince Smokes are. I don't know any of that. But apparently, yeah, they must be bad people if it makes Brooke's backbone crawl. Why? Why does it do that? So he must have had a run-in with the Vince Smoke family at some point. Or maybe their reputation precedes them. I don't know, but the invitation, I definitely think... Whole Cake Island is going to be some kind of Alice in Wonderland kind of thing going on. You know, the whole tea party stuff. And even just the way it looked when we first saw it in Fishman Island. It just looks like it's going to be some kind of Wonderland-esque place. Which I'm so excited to get to, honestly. I just, I have a feeling that Whole Cake Island is going to be incredible. There's just so much intrigue based around Sanji at the minute. We got a flashback back to Jaya, where he says he was born in the North Blue but raised in the East. And the whole... North Blue and East Blue, we would have had to cross the red line. And that is something that isn't easy to do. So oh, we're gonna get like such a good Sanji flashback soon, either in this arc or the next arc. Cause I'd love to know how he got from the North Blue to the East Blue. I think that'd be really cool. I'm also just button in here, seeing that I'm loving these flashbacks being so periodically placed into this arc. They aren't intrusive. They are very informative. And I think they're helping the plot go forward. Whereas a lot of the times, as much as I do love flashbacks, and they do add so much to the emotions of a character and the history of a character so that we learn more about them. But plot-wise, I feel like it does sometimes stall the current story a little bit. But with the flashbacks in the Zoark, it's been like really good and like really helpful. The plot's continuing to move. Sanji doesn't really have a choice but to go. And if he does get married to somebody in Big Mom's family, then they will be like subordinates to Big Mom. Sanji's like, no, Luffy is the man who will be king of the pirates. There's no way that he can be married to someone and, and allow this to happen essentially. But they have no choice. They're currently inside Capone at the minute. Like, he is the castle, you know? It's just, which is so odd. It's so odd. And now it makes sense why it would only be Sanji and Caesar going with them and Nami, Chopper and Brook being kicked out because Sanji does want to save them. And he does save them. He manages to get them out of Capone. Which honestly sounds so weird saying out loud. I don't know what Oda's obsession is with people with big tongues, but Vito the Phantom Gun, he has a crazy ass tongue like Carabao. Why? What's the fascination with these long tongues? If it's not big boobs, it's long tongues. What is Oda trying to say? Is he trying to show us his kinks? Are these the kind of things that he's looking for in a partner? Like, I do know that he got married to a Nami cosplayer. Maybe this is like some kind of secret kind of kink that he has. Long tongues and big boobs. Unless, no, I don't even want to go there. Anyway, Big Mom is very frightening. I thought she was frightening ever since Fishman Island when we talked to her over the phone. But we just add more to the fact that, you know, she is one of the four emperors. She has a lot of power. So we finally do find out what the letter said. And it's to the crew, I'm going to meet a woman. I will be back, Sanji. So I don't understand, like, I don't understand Brooke's response because he keeps saying that Sanji is never coming back. You know, he intends not to come back. But the last line in the letter is, I will be back. So I'm just like, why? Why are you saying that? To the crew, I'm going to be a woman. I will be back. Maybe there's something that Brooke knows about the family and about what's happening with Sanji right now that we aren't privy to just yet. And so even though Sanji says, I will be back, Brooke knows he'll not be back. 
for some reason because he knows them. There is something huge they're holding over Sanji at the minute and you know his poster is very relevant. Right, so in chapter 814, we find out that the Vinsmoke family were a family of killers. So my whole like royal thing was totally off the mark. But again, that just adds like so much intrigue to Sanji. Like, how did he escape this family? Did he escape this family? Was it willing? Does he have a good relationship with his family? Or is it like really strained? Like what went on there? I've never actually been this intrigued by a straw hat in such a long time. I think the last time I was this intrigued was Robin in NES Lobby. And the amount of people who told me as well that Sanji does redeem himself coming up, I imagine that this is what we're leading up to. We're leading to the redemption of Sanji. Especially since I've been treating him a little poorly with my opinions on him, which I do still stand by. But as long as I get more of him in a different light, then I want to be very, very happy about that and willing to maybe bump Sanji up my ranking of straw hats. And this chapter mainly consisted of Luffy and everyone deciding like, what to do about Sanji, saying if they can go and save him. I'm so glad that Peckham's is still alive. And who knows, maybe he can help us get to Whole Cake Island, infiltrate Big Mom, especially since they need to go in quietly and come up with a really good plan of getting to Whole Cake Island that is hopefully different to their entrances to other places. At the minute, it does seem a little bit like we get the same kind of thing whenever they get to a new place. They instantly split up. They cross hairs with people like straight away. It would be really good to see them enter Whole Cake Island stealthily. I think that would be really interesting to see. Just to change things up a bit, I do love the Cat Viper. I love that, you know, he loves chasing balls. <laughs> and also when there's catnip there, he'll be really distracted. The mink people, I feel, have been like so good. I love the Tontatas from Dress Rosa, but like the personality of the mink people are just, well, just up there with them. Getting to know and see all of these different species and different races in the One Piece world has been one of the best parts of being in the new world. And also before going to chapter 815, on the cover story, it's Vivi. Vivi and Carew. Oh. I just love seeing them. Ah, crap, chapter 815. I was wondering if we were gonna get any conflict and if maybe we just missed it because of what happened beforehand, which I actually wouldn't have minded if we did have an arc that was set after a conflict. Like the majority of the Straw Hats did just miss out on the big epic battles. Now that the samurai have reached Zo and Robin, Frankie and Brooke fell asleep, you know, they're like, oh, we're the adults. We have to make sure that everything's fine, make sure that they don't get a whiff of the samurai, lo and behold, they fall asleep. <laughs> Which honestly, they, they were up all night, so I don't blame them. But it's just like not gonna turn out well. So I wonder if this is where like some conflict comes in. But even then, I don't think the mink would turn against the straw hats just because of the samurai being there. I mean, they will want to defend the samurai, of course, but they need communication. They need to talk about this. But they are looking for the same person that Jack was looking for. So that is also gonna be very triggering for the mink people. So. Yeah, it's gonna be a shitstorm. Loved formally meeting Law's Hard Pirates, 20 strong. So I wonder if we're gonna be saying goodbye to Trafalgar Law soon, or if he's gonna be sticking around with us to Whole Cake Island, especially since now Luffy has the idea of going to Whole Cake Island on his own, so they're not essentially declaring war by all going together, which I do understand. I do understand, but that will also remind me of Luffy going after Ace by himself. We do need to save Sanji from this union. If he gets married, he'll have to leave the Straw Hats forever. And that's just not on. That is not on, we can't be having that. So it is a political marriage. So that's why I thought like there would be some kind of power that will be enhanced by both families having this union. But if the Vincible family are just killers, there's gotta be like something a little bit more to them that gives them that power status, unless it is fear. And like how Doflamingo was kind of like a black market kind of person, he had so much power too. Robin's also heard the name before, and Sanji's life is on the line here if he doesn't go through with it. So what does he do? How does he get out of this? He can't humiliate Mama. He will get a box and inside the box will contain the head of someone close to the recipient. So she's a little bit like a queen of hearts kind of person off with their heads. The monkey is gonna tell them all that the samurai are there. So I will need to know a little bit more about the samurai and their relationship with the minks because I don't understand exactly the history between them or why they hate them so much. But I do understand that hearing who they're looking for will be very triggering. So onward we go. Oh my God, chapter 816, what? <laughs> Wait, so they don't mind the samurai and Raizo is well? 
And he's he's fine. He's alive. What? Uh, as soon as I flipped that page over, because I was like, shit, shit. Like, Kirimon, he never thinks. Like, he is funny. He's hilarious. But the fact that he was like shouting, like, see, is this squabble? I am Kinemon, here I'm searching for Raizo. I was like, fuck, we're gonna get some kind of fight here. But no, as soon as I turn the page, they, like, they're kind of bowing and just, <laughs> I'm so shocked. I'm so, I genuinely thought that they were enemies or that they would actually fight them and kill them for seeing any kind of samurai there. I'm just, oh, I'm relieved. Don't get me wrong, I'm relieved because I was like, well, we can't be dealing with this right now, can we? We got Sanji to think about. The fact that all of the people knew about Raizo and he is there and he's been there all along. I'm just like, considering what they've gone through in five days, five days of fighting, claiming and pleading and begging and telling them that no, he is not here. We don't know who you're talking about. And just for them to end up being like that, oh my God, I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed with them. Like. What? I don't think they suffered any casualties. There were a lot of injuries, but I don't think Jack and his pirate group managed to kill anyone. I could be wrong on that, but they don't mention any like actual deaths. Just the fact that the city collapsed into ruin and that all of you were about to die, but you didn't die. Just like, okay, so they, they were pretty good at keeping that secret. Okay, okay. Oh my God, I don't know how I feel anymore. I don't know how I feel. And I think there's only like, what, eight chapters left of this? So I think this is just like the main like kind of setup arc for Whole Cake Island, more so than anything else. Cause I was saying like, oh, what's gonna be the conflict? Who's gonna be the villain? But we don't need that every single arc. So this feels like it is kind of laying some world rules, but also setting up future villains like Jack and giving us one for one Kaido, but then also Sanji, big mom. But yeah, I'm relieved. I'm so glad that Mamanosuke reunited with his dad. That was so sweet too. And also Kanjuro is quite funny. I do like these little moments with the samurais. It's odd what they bring to the crew right now because they're just like in their own little world, but we're on our way to helping them. It feels odd having them there, but I'm kind of getting used to them now since it's been a good few arcs that we've had Kinemon part of the crew in a way. After the chapter ended, there is a One Piece World Guide at the end, just explaining like the red line, the combat, the new world, East Blue, North Blue, West Blue, South Blue, a cheat sheet guide to the Straw Hat Travels. I need a full on, a full on encyclopedia. I'm talking 1,500 pages. I think one of the cats has had a ship. I want 1,500 pages of, well, maybe even more than that. Maybe we could have volumes, like hardback volumes of every single thing you need to know. I want a completely exhaustive world guide to One Piece. I want to say all of the islands that we haven't seen, all the islands we will never be able to see. I want to say those in these encyclopedias. I want absolutely every grain of information from Oda's brain into that. But alas, we may not ever get that. But I liked having that little world guide at the end of volume 81. But speaking of, I finished volume 81 and now I'm going on to volume 82. I finished chapter 817. Raizo was not what I was expecting. I love the fact that we explored some ninja stereotypes in this and the fact that Luffy and everyone were throwing commands and demands at him. And he's even like, stop throwing these stereotypes at me because I genuinely had my mind just someone very nimble, someone very small, maybe dressed all in black, and that's not what Raizo is at all. And also, I don't really know that much about ninjas. I don't really know all of the terminology with ninjas. I don't know their techniques. So I can't really speak too much on that, but I'm sure the more I read of not just One Piece, but of other manga that have ninjas in them, I might learn more of the way of the ninja. But so far, it seems really cool. He does, <laughs> I love the fact that they're like, oh, you know, it's like, what a bummer, he's not gonna do any like really cool special tricks. And then he's just like, it gets to him, it gets him. So like he does this disappearing trick and he's kind of multiplied, which Law says is Ninpo Shadow Claw Jutsu. And he can actually do all of these really cool things. So he does look pretty awesome. And if we meet more characters like this, especially at Wano, then I'm gonna be like really hyped and really excited for that. So if I genuinely join it, oh my God, I'm so glad that we found another Poneglyph. I don't know how many of my videos you've watched, but I feel like the Poneglyphs 
and the 100 Year Void are probably the mysteries that I'm the most interested in in the grander One Piece world. And the fact that we do have a polyglyph there that is apparently really red. It's very, very red. Like, why is it red? I would love for Robin to decipher it so that she can enlighten us some more with this very rich history. I was extremely shocked to find out that Momonosuke is not the son of Kinemon. Very, very shocked. He is actually a lord. Standing before you is the heir to Kazuki Oden, great daimyo of Kuri in the land of Wano. So he is a big shot. And I, you know, I love it. The fact that Momonosuke is like, telling them to treat him differently, essentially. And Luffy's like, so what? What do you mean, so what? Grovel when you speak to me, Luffy. No way, how come you being some fancy guy means the rest of us have to change how we act, you stupid jerk? And I totally, totally agree with that. I love that so much. Luffy doesn't say titles. He doesn't say station or power. He says people and, you know, Momonosuke is somebody who he's known for a little while now. And he's not gonna change how he acts just because he's a lord. You know? So I hope the same can be said when he reunites with Sanji. It does seem like Sanji in this family of killers is very important. Like more important than I realised from before. Hopefully this doesn't change the dynamic in the Straw Hats. It most likely will change it somewhat. But I hope it doesn't change it so much that it's an unrecognisable bond between them all. So I hope that carries over. I like that Luffy said that. But yeah, definitely very, very shocked at the fact that Momonosuke is not related to Kinemon. Very, very shocked. I did love it when Nami was like, oh Momo, if your father is a great lord, then I suppose his castle has a lot of treasure. <laughs> I'll never get sick of Nami's greed. Oh my God, I'm freaking out. We're learning so much. Chapter 818, I got so many, well, um, would I say answers? I don't know, so much to guide us in the right direction, I guess is the right way of saying that. Oh my God, that was like such an important chapter. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. Oh my gosh, like so many buzzwords in this chapter that I'm just like, oh, these are the words I'm looking out for. Poneglyphs, Raftal, One Piece, you know, just, it, whew, whew, okay, calm down. Firstly, I absolutely love the fact that not just Robin is being helpful with these Poneglyphs by reading them and deciphering them, but she's able to get Nami to help with it because the red poneglyphs are some kind of like road poneglyphs. So they are the ones that are guiding, there are four of them, they guide to essentially the final island, Raftal. And the four of them show a location on a map. Now whatever is in the middle of the four locations is Raftal. I'm just like, oh my God, like, oh, we're just, we're getting there. We're getting somewhere, you know? But the fact that we can get Nami to help draw this map through what Robin reads in the poneglyphs, it's like we're using the talents of the Straw Hats. They are all so important to the road to the One Piece, to Raftal. I mean, if the One Piece is even in Raftal, I don't know. There's now a part of me that's thinking, they're gonna get there and they're gonna realize the One Piece isn't there. Like, where is the One Piece? Or whatever the One Piece bloody is, you know? It just, oh. But yeah, Raftal, I'm just, oh God, I, oh. Honestly, this arc, I'm just learning so much. We need these arcs every now and then to remind us of the main goal, the main mission, the location of the final island, which for centuries has only been reached by the king of the pirates and his crew. Oh yes, it's, so it's finally time the place where we might find or might not find the One Piece. Oh, maybe, maybe. Oh God, I'm freaking out. So there's only one location of the Red Poneglyphs that they don't know about, but the other two are with, well, one of them's with Big Mom and the other one is with Kaido. And we know Big Mom is at Whole Cake Island, but Kaido, we find out, is at Wano. So, oh my God, like the next two, well, no, is that not the next two arcs? It's Whole Cake Island, then Reverie, then Wano. Oh my gosh, I really hope they can get the Poneglyphs. But then what about the last one? Even they're peeing their pants too. It's just like, oh, oh. And then Nami's like, oh my God, my vision just went black. It's like, yeah, it's getting more and more scarily real how close they are to getting to their final destination. But also the fact that they're gonna have to fight Big Mom and Kaido. Like they are gonna have to. And it's just like, look at Luffy's face. Look at Luffy's face when Usopp says, oh, we can just like sneak in and get the poneglyph and get Robin to read the poneglyphs and then get out there. They don't need to fight anyone. But Luffy's like, absolutely not. Where's the fun in that? Where is the fun in that? Just sneaking in, getting the locations and leaving. No, they're fighting them. <laughs> I love the fact that the cat fighter is mentioning just how important Robin's role is in this and that everyone's going to be after her. And Robin's like, I don't mind. After all, I've got very powerful friends who will protect me. Oh, this is like favorite straw hat moment in like arcs, in absolute arcs. And we've got the straw hats there just being like, and even Luffy's like, stop. He's like acting like Chopper right now. 
whoa, 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 you're gonna make me blush talking like that. Why, I ought to pound anyone in my way. You can't just rely on me like that. I won't let anyone lay a finger on Robin and then gnaw me. And if they do, I'll take their life and their money. I love that, I love that. They just, uh, yeah. I want friends like this. Another big, huge thing that we found out. Oh my God. Is that the Kazuki clan were the ones that created, and they can read the Poneglyphs too, which is the clan that Mamonosuke is part of. And Mamonosuke's father was killed before he was able to pass on that skill to him. <sighs> so Lord Auden, Mamonosuke's father, rode with the King of the Pirates to Raftal the Final Island, and it was there that he learned the secret of the world. What? <sighs> okay, so maybe, maybe Raftal is just um, the secret to what happened during the hundred year void and the one piece is somewhere else entirely oh my gosh oh, and the fact that kaido is the one that killed him this kaido character i swear if he is in one oh and we're coming up to that how are we possibly gonna fight him he's had such a huge impact on the story and the characters that I can't get over like how full steam ahead we are right now i feel like we're not slowing down we are not slowing down we're not wasting any time also the fact that there's only 20 published volumes after this too kind of Freaks me out. <laughs> right, there's still a few chapters left. I'm just, how much more information are they gonna throw at us in this arc? I'm just, how much more can I possibly take in? Finish chapter 819, Jack's back. Why can't he just get lost? I don't like him. They're gonna try and kill the elephant? Really? They better not hurt that elephant, I swear. I said this to my channel members, if there's gonna be any cruelty towards elephants, I wanna be so mad. Yeah, the alliance stuff. We've had so many different alliances since Punk Hazard, really. It's like it set off an epidemic of alliances since that first one between Trafalgar Law and Luffy. Now it's just like, boom, 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 boom. We're getting so many people coming together. It's like the message here is teamwork. The message here in the One Piece is teamwork. The one doesn't actually mean one. It means everyone, you know? Hmm. It's like, why this focus on so many people coming together, so many alliances. It has to be that we all have to become one in order to achieve our goals. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Again, very Luffy to turn down helping Kinemon when he asks about the whole like one off situation about like helping them take down Kaido. And I know that's what Luffy wants to do, but he wants Maunosuke to be the one to speak up for himself and to be the one to ask. And I was like, hey, that's an eight year old child. Like, don't be daft. But no, Luffy gets to him and it brings out Mamonosuke's emotion and his own feelings. And it really helps, I think, to further develop Mamonosuke. Kaido is responsible for my father's death. And Luffy knows how much this will mean to him. So I guess, at least I think he does. But I am too small, I cannot do it. So I want you to help me fight Luffy. Let's team up. It's an alliance. I'll take down Kaido. So, I mean, it's so awesome that he's gonna do that, but I'm just like scared, not just for Luffy, but for the other Straw Hats. Uh, it's not gonna be easy. It's the Ninja Pirate Mink Samurai Alliance. <laughs> but it's great because I don't feel so alone. I don't feel so alone and like the Straw Hats don't feel alone. And you know, there's like this whole team. They're also talking about opening one of those borders. That was Lord Auden's request and their deepest desire. There was also mention of vassals, which I remember from Skypiea. We have those kind of links to Skypiea a little bit with this arc. Vassals were the followers of Inaru, the god. So I kind of got flashbacks to Skypiea. We end up with uh, Jack will kill the elephant. No need to invade them. Absolutely not, I'll cry. Crap, I finished chapter 820 and I think the attack on the elephant is starting. Jack, 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 nothing ever good comes from a Jack. And I'm so sorry if your name is Jack, I apologize. There is a lot taken with this chapter too, just like a lot of talking. But I don't know if I have too many opinions on it all. And I don't want to just keep regurgitating all of the information from this too. Because you guys already know all of this anyway. It does help me to get it all in check. But one thing I found funny, unintentionally funny, is when they said, I think it was the Duke said, we accompanied Lord Auden as his retainers everywhere he went. So we also rode on Whitebeard's Moby Dick for a time. <laughs> I know the Moby Dick was Whitebeard's ship. The way that was worded, my mind went places, okay? Also, I haven't mentioned anything about it, but I am in love with this whale tree. I think it's such a gorgeous design. The whole like log pose situation too, which I was wondering about because we just haven't followed the log pose 
at all since coming to the new world. Like not one single island we've gone to was on the log poles or like in the way that we were supposed to follow with the log poles, you know? But it does seem like that's not really a problem. So Nami's like fine with that. But I love how they like hype her up. Like everyone's been such a hype person for the other straw hats in this arc. It's been so good to watch. Even if Nami does end up beating Luffy up right afterwards. <laughs> and Ron is just walking away laughing. But the main takeaway from this was Marco. Marco the Phoenix who was so high up on that popularity poll. But yeah Marco did clash with Blackbeard a year before. But was defeated. So now I'm worried about Marco. Marco is not dead right? He's just been defeated. And it was only after this major confrontation that Blackbeard was first included among the list of the four emperors. So like it was a huge deal. It was a huge thing. But now I'm concerned for Marco. Like, did he survive? I'm sure he did. But again, there were like, what, 16 white beard captains that had been taken down? But no, hang on. The 16 white beard captains that were taken down were from that Weevil guy, Edward Weevil, who I just remembered there. I totally forgot about him, but he was at the very start of the arc. So I guess we're not getting him in this arc. But no, he's the one who took down 16 of the captains right or at least thereabouts and then Blackbeard must have taken down one which was Marco. Uh, unless I'm getting my wires crossed it does happen. Nami and Chopper and Brooke I believe are all going with Luffy to whole cake which means we're leaving Robin, Frankie, Usopp and Zoro in Zo I think. I guess it depends on how this all concludes really because they might all be forced to go to whole cake island if Zo collapses but now I'm just like damn it's feels like so long since all the straw hats have been together. Like after the whole two years of them being apart, we've been non-stop just separated essentially. So the last time we were all together was at the very start of Dress Rosa, I believe. And then as soon as they headed off to Zo with Sanji, then Sanji going with Big Mom's pirates, it's like, ah, oh, it's gonna be a long time before they're all reunited, isn't it? It's gonna take ages. I don't even know if it's going to be Whole Cake Island anymore. They're going to drag it out, aren't they? Finished chapter 821. I don't know what I was worried about. I should have known that Sinesha would have kicked Jack's fleet's ass in one trunk swing. I mean, have you seen the size of Sinesha? Huge. Absolutely huge. But at first it did look like Zanesha couldn't fight back like they weren't allowed to. And Momonosuke and Luffy could hear Zanesha's voice. And this is something that ties back to Fishman Island. Like Luffy's been able to hear voices like that, just like Goldie Roger apparently could too. And it was Momonosuke who told Zanesha to fight back. And I love that. I love that so much. Zanesha is so interesting. I didn't really think too much of this elephant because I just thought, oh, this is just what it was made to do. It's just like part of this island and it's Zo and it just goes through the new world, just walking around and stuff like that. But I didn't really think too deeply of the backstory. And we don't really get too much of a backstory. We just find out that I think Zanesha committed a crime at some point. Yeah, long ago the elephant committed a crime and ever since it has only been allowed to walk. It must continue following its orders. And then Zanesha is like, therefore I just need permission this once give me the order to fight. And like, what was Jack thinking? Come on, it's a huge ass elephant. This is terrifying. Like, could you imagine being on one of those ships right there with this huge elephant right in front of you? It literally, like just one swing, that's all it takes. I love it so much. But yeah, that's so epically cool. Probably my favorite moment of the arc. Well, apart from when the straw hats were back and robbing up. Yeah, I do love the whole idea that Luffy and Momonosuke can hear the elephant. But Momonosuke is actually able to see as well and finds out that it's actually Jack who's fighting. Luffy has everything. <laughs> Luffy has so many good abilities. He's unlocked hockey. You know, he has his rubber powers. Yeah, and just, yeah, like, is there anything he can't do at this point? But that was the conflict swiftly brushed aside. So that now Luffy is still gonna go to the next island with only some of his straw hats. So it hasn't really changed too much. It was really just like a nuisance thing. Like it was a chapter of nuisance. Jack's just been a nuisance. Let's just push him out of the way. So Jack's been defeated at the minute. Probably will come back. Hopefully not anytime soon. Hopefully not again in this arc because he just seems to be like a disease at the minute. Just like keeps cropping up. 
You're just trying to get rid of it, you know? Oh, I finished chapter 822 and Vivi's out at sea now. Oh my gosh, please tell me she reunites with the Straw Hats. That would be so cool. I would absolutely love that. Love that so much. Are they on their way to Reverie, actually? Isn't that a, a thing that's coming up? So I wonder if that's why they're at sea. But oh my gosh, I just I just love seeing her and I love how happy she is that she is going out to sea. Slow down, Vivi, why are you in such a good mood? It's been so long since I was last at sea. Yes, yes, honestly, she is a sea adventurer at heart. They also need to find a better way of leaving Zoe. They need some kind of elevator system. Maybe just like on one side, on one leg, they can have some kind of pulley system. I don't know. Frankie should try and come up with something that'll help. <laughs> like, I love the way that Luffy just launched them all off the side of it and everyone is like freaking out. But it's so sad as well at the same time because they're saying goodbye to half of our team. And we're saying goodbye to Law as well at the minute too. Somebody I've been absolutely loving since Punk Hazard. God, come back to me, come back. But I mean, actually having Nami, Chopper, Brooke and Luffy together is actually a really good group to have because they were the ones that were on the ship in Dress Rosa. So yeah, we didn't get too much of them in Dress Rosa. In fact, barely anything. So to get more of a balance with them in the next arc, That'd be absolutely great to see. And with it being such a small group too, maybe this means they don't have to split up as soon as they get to Whole Cake Island, maybe. And also Pedro, one of the Minx, comes with them too. <laughs> Usopp's made an army a new climb attack. And as soon as Usopp's like, now as for the cost of materials, Mirage Temple, <laughs> it's just, it reminds me of when she did that in Alabaster. Was it Alabaster or was it before Alabaster? It might have been between Drum Island and Alabaster when she asks Usopp to make her something. Am I confusing that with the anime? Uh, I don't think I am. I'm sure it was in the manga where Usopp is trying to get a compensation for making her something. And she's just like, thank you so much Usopp, you're a great friend. And you know, it just like totally skimps out on paying for things. But that's so cool. Hopefully now we get to see Nami kick some ass in Whole Cake Island. The SBS corner was actually filled with so much Nami stuff too. It's just all about Nami at the minute. And I don't hate that. One last interesting thing I will note about this chapter is that Frankie is planning on making a weapon to use against Kaido. Didn't Frankie destroy the plans for the Pluton or a Pluton in any lobby? But you know, he still might have those plans in his head. Maybe this weapon will be something similar to the Pluton based on maybe his memory of these Pluton blueprints that he destroyed. Because he probably remembers, right? It's just all in here. Chapter 823 done. Almost totally forgot about the Revolutionary Army's headquarters being discovered. I didn't forget, forget, but it just like slipped my mind. But yeah, now it's in ruin. It's in ruin. What happened? Why? But what about Sabo and Koala and Dragon? Like what happened to them? Baltigo, headquarters of the Revolutionary Army, already in ruin. Oh my God. Also, I was like, wait, Carrots joined? But yeah, she kind of just jumped in on the action. Somehow, I don't know how to feel about that. She seems like she might be a fun companion. So maybe that will help with some of the comic relief that some of the other Straw Hats provide, like Usopp, for instance. Especially since she seems so clueless. She's never actually left her home before, so uh, she could end up being a burden. She could be funny. We didn't really get a whole lot of her too much. We got some of her in Wanda. I think out of all of the minks, it probably was those two that we got quite a bit of. And I was right, I was right. So Vivi and her dad are on their way to the Reverie, which is at Marijoa. Cobra seems to be unwell. I don't know if he's hamming that up just to try and get Vivi to get married. But yeah, that's uh, concerning. Listen, I've got piles and piles of pictures of suitors. Toss them all out, tee -hee. Yeah, that's right, Vivi, you don't need no man. This prick. I think the King of Goa and the Queen of Goa are also on their way to the Reverie. Ugh, now be gone from my sight, trash. Ugh, it just reminds me so much of post-war and the uh, entitlement that people had and the way that they look down on people it makes me sick. Really random, Wapol is trying to bring down the Cherry Blossom Kingdom which was Drum Island on the Grand Line. So I was so glad to see, oh my God, I've forgotten her name. Oh my God, the person they kept calling the witch. Kuraha, Kuraha. Isn't it? Yeah, Kuraha. I think she's also on her way to the Reverie, I think. Viola, Rebecca, King Riku, and I don't mean to be a bitch, but Shirahoshi. <sighs> we only see her for a little bit, but the fact that she's crying and she's like, I can't, I'm scared. I'm just like, suck it up. Suck it up. I mean, I expect her to go to the Reverie and stuff, and she's gonna take those lessons that she learned from Luffy, but I'm just like, 
I'm sick of saying you cry. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to this, but it was funny when Kara first appeared because everyone's like so uh, tired after Luffy jumped off the side of the freaking elephant and they're all like, you know, this way or that way. And, and Luffy's like, put some spirit into it. And Kara appears out of nowhere and she's like, okay, I've got it. And then Luffy says, see, she's perfectly fine. And I was like, what? <laughs> that was funny. But yeah, only one chapter left of Zoe. And it's been an interesting one. Oh, Sanji. Like this is the only time I kind of want him to prove Zoro wrong. <laughs> I finished the last chapter of Zoe, chapter 824. Oh, that rhymed. <laughs> as soon as he sees a picture of pudding, considering what's on the line here, if Sanji marries her, then he'll have to leave the straw hats. And that's not what any of us want. Not even Sanji wants that. Hopefully in the next arc in Whole Cake Island, Sanji will overcome his weakness, his simping. Because if he doesn't, then his future is in jeopardy. Like, will he get his own goal of finding the old blue? Will he ever sail with the Straw Hats again? Will he ever reunite with his friends? Like, those are the important things that have to happen. And if he marries Pudding, then that's just not gonna happen. So he needs to overcome the simping to do that. And I'd love that. I honestly would love that. If Whole Cake Island shows us that, and shows us that character progression, especially since I genuinely thought Sanji had regressed after the time skip, then I will honestly love him forever, all sins will be forgiven, and I'll just kiss him all over, okay? Which I know he would not want. He would not want, he would probably kick me in the face, but I would risk it. I would risk it for good character development. Luffy as well, oh my god, who put him in charge of cooking? But the fact that he set the bloody ship on fire and made a week's worth of food inedible, it's like, why? Why would you let Luffy control all of that. They do need Sanji now more than ever. I love the idea that they always know that too. Like they do realize that how much he is important to the gang. One thing that surprised me is that Captain Kid, Eustace Captain Kid, is imprisoned by Kaido. I feel a bit bad for him actually. He seemed a little bit intense and I'm talking about Kid. Kid did seem quite intense. And honestly, he did look a little bit evil. He has a bit of an evil look to him sometimes. But obviously I need to not judge people based on appearances like I have been doing with like Senor Pink and Bartolomeo when I first met him too. So I do feel sorry for Kid. And especially since, you know, when you look at what Kaido can do and how angry he is and how much rage he has inside of him, like I'm scared for Kid's well-being. I'm scared for anybody who comes in Kaido's path. Like, I wish Kaido and Blackbeard were enemies so that they could potentially take down each other. Like, that would have been amazing. But I just don't think that's going to be the case. Jack is still alive at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> Luffy's reaction to his dad too, Dragon, is really funny. Like, you just put it together. He's just like, oh, he doesn't look anything like me. But I like the fact that Luffy is more worried about Sabo because they did have a special bond that was really highlighted in Dress Rosa and to see how happy Sabo being alive again made Luffy. It was really touching. Unfortunately, there were no casualties. So Sabo, Dragon, Koala are alive still. But still, it's like, what becomes of them now? Are they imprisoned? Have they been knocked out? Like what? Uh, if anything, this entire arc just raised my interest level to the next level, which I didn't think was possible, especially when it comes to that 100 year void, the One Piece, most importantly, Raftal as well. Gosh, uh, just so much, so much to take from this arc that I really, really did enjoy. I need to bring it here because I don't know how to rate this. It's so short. What do I give it? I gave Dress World a 10. I gave Fishman Island an 8.5. I gave Punk Hazard a 7.5. Gave Return of Sabbath a 7. What would I do with it? The Rise or being fine or like there safe and well, oh my God, like blew my mind. That was crazy, but I love that. I love the direction of it. I love being able to see exactly the direction we're going into and knowing that the things that we're building up to with the greater scale of this world, the things that we're trying to find, the One Piece, Raftal, 100 Year Void, the Poneglyphs, just like so much importance to this. Kaido is again creeping me out. Jack, the minks were so fantastic too. Oh my God, the whole huge elephant. <laughs> And the whole setting of Zoe was gorgeous and amazing. I don't think it was better than Dress Rosa, but I do think it was better than Fishman Island. Even though Fishman Island was so much bigger, I might give it a nine. I might give it a nine. I've given so many post arcs a nine though. I gave post Ennius Lobby a nine. I gave post War a nine. And they're the kind of arcs that give you so much information too. I think it's another nine. I do love these info dumpy kind of arcs. 
So I think, yeah, I'm going to give it a nine. But yeah, next will be Whole Cake Island. I'm thinking of splitting it into three videos instead of two, just to help with me being able to be a bit more in depth with chapters, hopefully. Hopefully by not force myself to read so much in one video, that it means I can take my time more with the chapters, talk more about them, so then I will still have long videos. They should still be over an hour long, I imagine. But hopefully it does give me more time to actually talk and dissect and digest the chapters more. So Whole Cake Island might potentially be three videos instead of two. Just letting you know, heads up on that. But that is the next arc we are going to, the next island we are adventuring to. And I hope you stick around to see me read that. So that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all your comments down below. Let me know everything you thought of the Zoe arc. What did you think of my thoughts? Anything you want to point out? Anything I missed? I would love to chat to you. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons and my One Piece channel members for supporting my channel. If you'd like to join my Patreon or my One Piece channel membership, then all the links are down in the description box. But yeah, I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.